Hi and welcome back. I hope everybody's staying safe and well. Keep going with that. Today's video is going to be all about hip and groin. I've even had a question about it while we've been doing these videos, so I thought it's a very important subject to cover for people. I see a lot of it in my clinical practice with footballers getting groin injuries. You often hear about it in the Premiership as well in this country, and also um, pregnancy and just general life. So what I've noticed is that most people who get groin problems have got a real problem with rotation through their hips. So I'm going to cover the two bits together and hopefully give you some really good information and some really good exercises to go away and get rid of that hip and groin problem. Off you go. Right, okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to start off with just a few exercises just to really try and warm up through the hips before we start trying to stretch anything out. I'm going to try and use this mirror, I'm going to try and step in the position so you can see me from the side as well. Uh, it may work, hopefully it does help you a little bit. Um, and so they're going to be quite tricky exercises, the first couple, uh, but once you've got them, they're actually really easy to do. I'm going to demonstrate something to begin with, and I'd like you just to join in with me. And so just take an arm and let it just swing, and you can feel that kind of drop it has in it. Drop, swing, drop and swing, drop and swing, drop and swing. Now that's what we're going to try and emulate, but using our leg. Okay, it's quite tricky to get the balance, but once you've got it, you'll be there. So what we're going to do is we're going to bring up our knee to be parallel to the ground, and we're going to be doing this effectively. Okay, so that's our swing, and that's our drop and swing. And what we're going to do is get that knee to describe like an infinity symbol, which looks this shape. And so what we're going to do is we're going to up and out, and as we come across, we're going to rotate our leg and come down and across. We're going to come up and rotate the other way and down that way. Okay, up and rotate up and rotate, so it's up and twist, up and twist, up, down and twist, up, down and twist, up, down and twist, up, down and twist. So what I'll try and do is just put that together and hopefully you'll be able to have a look at it. It does take a bit of effort, it does get way easier. Get somebody to watch you if you can because that's probably the easiest way for them to go, you're not quite getting it right. Or if you're getting it right, spot on, well done, you did better than I did to start off with. So starting from here, going to go up, down and across, and it's just nice sweeping motions. And as you get better, you can feel that foot just swings, which is a bit like the arms do. Obviously, I'm counteracting my rotation with my arms. So I'll slow it down again for you. I'll do it with the other leg so you can see that one too. Up, down and across, up, down and across. If I speed it up. What a lot of people do is they don't come up here, they come here and do this. And you can see the knee's not going up at all and it's really hard to do. Try and get that up and down motion as well. So you're really describing that figure eight on its side. Have a go with that. If you get it first time, let me know because you've done way better than I've managed. Well done. Okay, so the next video I'm going to show you is a hip aeroplane. You do need a little bit of space to do it. Um, I often suggest to people they do it in a kitchen with a kitchen table in front of them because we're going to be banding forward like this and if you feel yourself unbalancing, if you've got a table there, you can just touch it with your fingertips and it just gives you that little bit of stability. It's an easy way to do it. Now the way I normally suggest you, you start off with is just thinking about uh, like an oriental bow. It's like it's very much like this. There's no kind of, you don't twist or anything like that because what a lot of people do is they twist as they go into position. So all we're going to do is I'm going to show you side on to begin with, then I'm going to turn to face the camera and give you a second observation. We're going to come like this, arms out to the side, legs straight, and I'm going to come down like this. We're not twisting here. That's not what I want to see. I want you to be absolutely parallel here. Down, get your balance. And now the important bit is we're going to try and keep our leg and our body stable and together. We're going to rotate around our left, left hip in this case, and then slowly back around the other way. Try and keep the swing as big as you can and try and not bend your body. As soon as you bend your body, you've actually cheated completely. Try and keep your, try and keep it like you're in this position here. So you're, you're in that almost star position the whole time through without bending your body like that. Much more difficult than it looks, but once you've got it, same as everything else, it's really worth doing it. So I'll show you from this position here. Okay, you can see I'm not doing that. Okay, trying to keep it straight here. Rotate round and rotate round. Just do five to ten rotations each way, have a go with it, see how you get on. Okay, so this next little group of exercises is going to be using a door frame. They're dead easy to do, they don't require any special equipment, but they're really, really effective in trying to get some rotation through your hip. All I'm going to do is set backwards, I'm going to lift my knee up in front of me, so my knee is sitting exactly between the two door posts. I'm going to lift, twist, turn my foot that way, and I'm going to twist that way, all the while keeping my knee like a pivot in the middle of the frame. 
Now, that's dead easy for most people. If it's not easy for you, that's because we've got a little bit more work to do. Don't worry about it, it's quite normal. We're going to come up, hold the knee there. What we're going to do is just to make it more difficult, is you're going to push your foot into the frame and push your foot into the door jam that way as well. And then this way, push. And this way, push. Now, what I tend to do is I tend to do this in groups of 10, so 10 per set, and I tend to push for three seconds each time. And you can repeat that set three times. So it's a total of 30 pushes with three to five second holds on each one, but do it in three sets of 10. Okay, have a go with that. Do both hits. It's a fantastic one to do, and I hope it really helps you. Okay, so this next one is going to be a yoga stretch. It's called the cobbler's pose. It's one I use a lot with my clients, and it's very, very effective at just only up through the hips and stretching out that groin for people. I'm not as good at it as I should be, but I think I probably just need to practice more than I do. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to put our feet together, and we just draw our feet back in towards our bottom. And we, nice tall body, I had 10 to hold onto my feet, and just lean forward. I'll show it to you from the side again in a second. And then that's, that's basically it. You just hold that stretch as long as you can. You can breathe out a bit more, a bit more, a bit more, a bit more, and increase your stretch. What I like to do is I like to exaggerate the strength by putting my elbows on my knees and push down with my elbow. So as I'm coming forward, I'm also pushing down on my knees and I'm stretching through my hips at the same time. Breathe in, breathe out, lean down a bit more. Breathe in, breathe out, lean down a bit more. There you go. I'm just going to show you from the side. So my feet are like this. Okay, draw them back in, elbows at the side, no bend in your back, nice tall back, and just lean forward. And that's going to give you the bigger, best stretch that you can get from this position. Have a go with that, see how you get on. Okay, the last stretch I'm going to show you is probably one of the more tricky hip stretches, but it's also one of the most effective that I know. It's called the 90-90 stretch, it's one I learned when I was doing stick mobility, but I tend to use it without the sticks for most people. What we're going to do is basically we're going to put our feet in almost into the Isle of Man flag position, but instead of having three positions, we'd have four. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our legs out, one to the side, knees at 90 degrees, and that one's at 90 degrees, and this one, so you've got 90 degrees here, so you're making three sides of a square with your leg and your pelvis, and that one's out at 90 degrees. Nice tall body, trying to keep bottom on the ground and trying to get that knee as far and as close to the ground as you possibly can and not trying to slurp slouch over. And all I tend to do is I tend to come this way and stretch and push this buttock, buttock down into the ground and slowly back around this way and the same here. You're just pulling yourself around with this hand trying to increase that stretch. Well, all the while trying to keep this buttock in contact with the ground and this knee as far down as possible. I'm not quite so good and flexible the other way, I'll show you because that should like, highlight the issue. So again, three sides of a square here, 90 degrees with that knee. You can see I'm already tilted over more because I'm just not as open through this hip as I am on this one. I'm going to come through this way and I can really feel that pulling in my left hip. So I think I probably need to do this more than I am. And then around this way. and go both ways. Now, as you get better at this, what you can do, I will be facing the side of the camera to do this, so just literally let this leg come up, this one come across, and you can see I've automatically gone straight into the old position of the other side. So as you get better, you can literally just swap from side to side and be doing both, okay? And then you can do your rotations in the position. Very, very good exercise. It's a fantastic way to get those hips open. It is quite strong. Don't push it too hard, but enjoy it and have a go with it. Okay, so the final thing I'm going to show you is sometimes there's just no substitute for getting your fingers into that muscle and trying to release it manually, and hip and groin remain true in exactly the same way. So what I suggest for most people is if you do this in the shower, actually, or in the bath, having the water over your body stops you getting the skin burn if you treat the muscle, so that can be quite helpful. If you come up the seam of your leg, trouser leg, all the way up until you hit the groin bone, okay, so the bottom of the pub pubic bone, all the way up there. So if I just use two hands, I, I put them like this, and I see little circles, just come up here, and I like... I mostly suggest you do this leaning against the wall of the shower or in the bath, like I said. Go all the way up there. Now you can go from the trouser seam all the way through to about, about that position on your thigh. So not quite to the front of your thigh, but getting close to it. And you'll find all sorts of little bits in there. Sometimes you'll feel it feels almost like corrugations. And that's just where you've got a lot of serration. The muscle you just need to get in there and just move around a little bit, and that can be quite beneficial. The other one you can do is if you've got the valley here, it goes through the groin. Right at the bottom end, you can put your fingers there and you can feel the bone. If it's got a pulse, don't push it. If it's incredibly tender, just leave it till you can get it treated professionally. But if it's not too bad, you can just get your finger in there. And there's normally three points, just there. One, 
two, three, going down the leg. So right at the bottom of the valley there, you can feel the bit of bone, just pushing there, one, two, three, the adductor magnus muscle. That is very, very, very effective if it needs it. But please, if you're not sure about that one, leave that one out, just do the other bits. Have a go with that, see how you get on. Okay, so there it is. Today's video is over. Hope it's given you some really good tips and tricks on how to get yourself out of pain and get your body fit and healthy to get back out and enjoy that exercise again. The more you do, the better for your body, the better for your mind, the better for everything. Off you go, enjoy your exercise. But anyway, as always, please subscribe in the link below. It's really helpful because the more subscribers I get, the easier it is to get this information out. And while you're about it, please pass this around to all your friends, family, people you think may be benefiting from it. The more people we've got benefiting, the more people we've got exercising, the better we'll be as a nation and stronger we'll be. So stay safe, stay well, and be a community.